Again, we have the great privilege of having Steve Primo with us. A nice thing about Steve's trading techniques that he's going to show us is he was right there on the floor as a uh, as specialist. So he knows the exact, uh, I want to say, techniques or indications of when things are starting to turn. Uh, so I, tonight he's going to be working on uh, the right way to trade the tops and the bottoms. So with that, Steve, welcome to the Candlestick Forum. Uh, what, uh, what are we got going? And... Uh, yeah, we're anxious to hear your information tonight. Thanks, Steve. Thank you so much. It's it's great to be presenting back again, and, and thanks to everyone in attendance tonight. Uh, tonight, I have a great presentation for you. I'm going to show you an entry technique, which I feel is the right way to trade tops and bottoms. And as Steve said, this is a technique that I uh, was taught on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange, where I used to work. So I'm going to give you uh, this entry technique so that you can start using it, uh, I was going to say, as early as tomorrow, but because of the holiday, probably most likely as early as uh, uh, Monday or next week. Uh, my name is Stephen Primo. I am the president and founder of Specialist Trading. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with our website, uh, we are first and foremost an educational company. I know uh, we provide our students and our members with signals and with strategies that generate signals, but we're more about giving you sound fundamental education that has stood the test of time. We really want to teach you how to empower yourself so that you don't have to rely on an outside source to tell you what to do. Uh, you can basically see a setup through experience, through our training, and then ultimately make your own trading decisions. Uh, I, I say that because uh, I've been trading, as you see there, for 38 years. I started my trading career on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was actually trading for, I was on the floor for a total of 16 years, and nine of them I was a specialist for Donaldson, Lupkin, and Jenrette. Uh, I traded through the crash of uh, 1987 through the great bull market that followed after that. And I've seen and traded uh, through just about every market condition imaginable, from crashes to straight up markets to sideways markets to quiet markets. I've seen and traded just about everything out there, so I know what works and what doesn't work. And when I say work, I mean what has a level of consistency to it, because everything will work from time to time, but we're looking for consistency, things that work over time. I left the floor in the mid-90s to manage money and also to trade my own account. And seven years ago, I started specialist trading, where all I do is teach and mentor students of mine and so that they can use all the different things I've accumulated in my 38 years, put together a trading plan, and then have you, once again, make your own trading decisions. So, as I stated, we are first and foremost an educational company. Our goal is to teach you how to trade. Uh, our goal is to make you consistent traders. Now, before I begin with showing you this entry technique, I ask that you please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you a lot of performance results. I'm going to go through a lot of charts using this technique. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I'm about to share with you will be repeated in the future. And uh, as you're taking a look at our disclaimer, I would also like to, at this time, to invite each and every one of you to follow us on Twitter. This is our handle right there, at SPCLSTTRADG. I post a lot of great free information there on a daily basis, anywhere from daily financial wisdom to actual signals that we're currently in uh, that our members have taken through our strategies or through our techniques. So feel free to follow us there. And it's, and it's uh, information not only for stocks, but also for futures, for currency pairs, as well as stocks, and just trading just about any market, any time frame. Now, specialist trading is the educational portion of our country. Pro Trader Strategies is our marketing side, and we've teamed up with uh, uh, Pro Trader Strategies. So if you want more information on uh, Facebook, you can log on there, and you can go to Pro Trader Strategies, and there's a lot of videos, and a lot of more free information. You can get information on us and on what we teach. Okay, now I'd just like to start out uh, with the, the philosophy behind specialist trading because uh, uh, even though I have been trading for 38 years, my trading started out pretty much the way most of you do, and pretty much the way, if you look back in the history of a lot of traders, the same way, I think uh, Stephen as well, is that you always start out miserably. Uh, and most of the traders who uh, you know, have gone on to trade 20, 30, 40 years down the road started out the same where they just couldn't make ends meet. And uh, you know, I know from firsthand experience, because this is the way I used to trade, even though I was on the floor and I had had some good amount of experience, when I first became a specialist, I, I just could not seem to get going. I would have maybe three or four great trades, and then the fifth trade, I'd give everything back. 
I give everything back that I made. And it was very discouraging because just when I thought I was back on track and, and doing well, I give everything back and I'm right at zero again. And so I went this way, I went on this way for about a, roughly a year. And uh, it was just very discouraging, very frustrating. And I was reading all conventional wisdom. I was doing all the uh, you know, seminars and reading all the books. And things just didn't seem to work. There was no consistency. They would work for a while until they stopped working. So the point I'm trying to make is that I was in the same uh, you know, scenario, same, same boat as, as most of you may be going in or have been in the past. And, uh, it's it's very it's it's very depressing. So there were a few specialists on the floor that have been trading about thirty or forty years. They were my mentors, and they took me aside, and they really taught me how to be consistent. And so they really showed me what I was doing wrong and what was really standing in my way to becoming a consistent trader. So when once I started taking in all the advice and things that they shared with me, that's when my trading started to become consistent. Because what they really share with me is that. I was relying too much on outside sources, things that had been taught to me that were supposed to work. But that over time, there really is no consistency to them. For some reason, we just attached ourselves to these old wives' tales that things are supposed to work, and there really is no uh, proof that they work over time, because that's really what it's all about. It's all about being able to sustain yourself over time. So my goal is to teach you the same things that my mentors taught me. These are the same things that were able to turn my trading around and hopefully we'll be able to turn many of your trading around as well. Okay, So let's start out the presentation by how most people trade tops and bottoms. And I'm saying this, once again, from first-hand experience because this is the way I used to trade. So I'm going to start out by showing you some um, examples. And they're going to start out with older charts just for educational purposes. But then we'll get into newer charts, uh, some examples that happened as uh, recent as today. Okay. Uh, one last thing also, I know a lot of you like to take questions, but I'll take the questions at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, kindly hold off uh, until about the next 20 or 30 minutes, and then we'll uh, have the remaining of time for any questions you may have. Okay. So let's start out with how most people trade tops and bottoms. Once again, this is the way I was taught. Most people are taught this in books or seminars, and let's just show you a, just a standard variation of how to do that. Let's look for stocks first for all you stock traders. Okay, as we see here, we have just a standard chart, okay, cat tractor, an older chart. And uh, if you're usually going to be trading a top or a bottom, you want some type of overbought, oversold tool, either an oscillator or momentum tool. And what you see I've plotted here on the very bottom is just your standard slow stochastic. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what you use. I've only just picked that one and didn't change it, didn't edit it at all. So it does not matter at all. All that matters is that something tells you when it's overbought and something tells you when it's oversold. So if we look there at the uh, two lines, let me get up my pointer here. We see that this top line, I believe the threshold is at 80. When the indicator goes above, anywhere above, we are in the so-called overbought territory. And when the indicator, or the two indicators, regardless of how you want to trade it, trade below, well, then it's telling us that we are in the so-called oversold territory. Okay. So conventional wisdom tells us then that if we are in the oversold conditions, that's when you want to buy. And so let's say you would have jumped in and you know, you've gone to all the seminars, you read the books, and so you, you decide to jump in and trade this technique, and you buy here. And lo and behold, you see that we actually do go up fairly well. So you're starting to love this. You go, hey, this is pretty good. I've got a nice profit. And then we get to the so-called overbought conditions. So what do you do? Okay, it's time now to exit your long position and sell. So you've got a nice profit, and now you go short if you're uh, so inclined. So you go short and lo and behold, the stock goes straight down. And you're having a really nice gain here and we get to the so-called oversold conditions down here. And so now you jump in one more time, you cover your short and you buy. At this rate, <clears throat> excuse me, you're starting to think you're going to retire in a few months because it's it's fantastic. Uh, you, you found the, uh, uh, the uh, key to, to trading any of the markets. This is how you do it. So now you're long, and you see here that this time it doesn't go up. But that's OK. You've had two or three good trades under your belt, and you have some cash in your account, so you decide to double up because you're still in the so-called oversold condition. So you buy some more. And after all, you don't need it to go up that much because uh, you, know, you, you now have doubled up. So all you need now is for it to go up a little bit to even just break even. So we're in the so-called oversold conditions, and well, it goes even lower. So now you triple up. And as you can see, 
We go lower and lower until ultimately you've given everything back and you've lost everything you made on the first two trades. Does this look familiar to anybody? It looks familiar to me because this is the way I used to trade on the floor. Remember I told you I used to have maybe three or four great trades and then the fifth trade I'd give everything back. Now this doesn't work just on stocks. Let's go over to an older chart of the E-mini S&P. Right? Let's look at a different uh, market and a different time frame. Here's a five minute chart of the E-mini S&P. We still have the same slow stochastic. And remember, I don't want you to get stuck on thinking that, well, I have to use this indicator. It doesn't matter. It could be any RSI tool. It can be any uh, overbought, oversold tool. It could be any momentum. It can be something you've thought up of. It could be what someone comes up with uh, uh, on TV that says the markets are overbought, oversold, any indicator. It does not matter. All that matters is that whatever we're looking at tells us that we are in so-called overbought, oversold conditions. So we have here the same thresholds, 80 and 20. When we are above, we are in the so-called overbought, or below, we're so-called oversold. Okay, so we use the same technique here in a five-minute chart, and we get to the overbought, so we sell, and we have a really nice gain there. The market goes down in the E-mini. And now that the indicator goes into the so-called over sold territory, well, we cover our short and buy. And now we're long, and we have a nice profit once again, and the indicators cross in the so-called overbought conditions. So we exit. So we've got three great trades. At this time, you're starting to think about that new car you want to buy or maybe even remodel the house because, boy, your life is just fantastic. And so you sell here, and, well, guess what? It doesn't really go down, but you decide to sell some more. You short some more contracts or sell some more contracts. And so you keep selling and selling, and then everything you made in the first couple of trades, you've given back, and now you're right back to a loss call. Okay? This is the way, once again, I used to trade. And this does, doesn't work in stocks or, or, or the mini only. It also transfers over into the Forex markets. In fact, I think you'll see this more in the Forex markets because they trend so strongly. So let's look at an older chart here of the uh, Swiss franc. As you can see, we are in the so-called overbought conditions altogether. So what is this telling us? It tells us that we want to sell. So you sell the Swiss franc contract, and you see here that it's really not going down, but it's okay. It uh, kind of goes sideways to up a little, so you decide to sell some more, and you sell some more, and now you've blown out your entire account. You're hiding your statements from your significant other, and you're really wondering and worrying about whether there's much time left for you to trade in the markets. I know what this is like because I went through all these scenarios emotionally and uh, physically here. I did the same thing. I was shorting the market one time when it went straight up. I had none, nothing but short positions as every stock I was trading went straight up and I couldn't understand it. We had been overbought for ages and they continued to go higher and higher. So everything I had been taught was telling me that when the markets are overbought, you sell. And when the markets are oversold, you buy. Well, at this time, I was about ready to pull out my hair uh, I just, uh, you know, was lucky enough to come in contact with my mentors. These were uh, traders on the floor, and they were telling me, they said, Steve, listen, if there's one thing you must learn before you get on the road to consistency, it's this. And it's basically, there is no such thing as overbought, oversold. Okay? There's no such thing as overbought, oversold, because you've all seen markets, regardless of what market you're looking at, stocks, futures, forex, You've all seen them continue to go higher and higher, way beyond the allocated time, you know, weeks, months, even years. And we've all seen markets, regardless of time frame, go straight down. In fact, some issues, some equities have gone down to zero. Okay, Enron, a lot of other issues, they've gone down, they've, they've just totally uh, disintegrated. So it's really, uh, you know, a gambler's mentality to think you can pick a top or a bottom because when uh, markets move, there's no such thing as overbought, oversold. Now, this was very difficult for me for, to, to grasp this concept. In fact, I, I fought it all the way. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to grasp it because it went against everything I had ever learned. But ultimately, when I was you know, brave enough to let go of it, that's when my trading started to become consistent. So I ultimately came to the conclusion that you're right. There is no such thing as overbought or oversold. It, it's silly to try and pick a top or bottom based off that. But if this course and of what my mentors taught me about trading tops and bottoms correctly, uh, was in place, well then what was the correct way or the right way to trade tops and bottoms? And my mentor simply told me to go with them. Okay? Now what does that mean to go with tops and bottoms? Well this is 
the technique I'm going to be sharing with you today. It's an entry technique. All right? I'm going to start off by showing you a lot of charts. Some of them may be older, but then we'll go into more current and more recent examples. Now, the one thing I want to stress here, this is just an entry technique. All right? I know the first question I'll get at the end of the presentation is, well, Steve, where would I exit or where would I place my stops? There are some great trades there. We're only sharing with you the entry technique today. If, if you've been trading for a while, you'll be able to figure out where you want to place a stop or where you want to exit. Okay? You could basically just place your stop below the last pivot, and you could exit at two times risk. So if you're risking $500, well, when you had a $1,000 profit, then that's when your exit point is. But the difficult thing is deciding when to get in, and that's what we're going to be sharing with you today. Okay. Here's the technique. All right, first thing, let's go back to the chart we looked at, Cat Tractor. The original chart, remember we tried to buy and continue to buy all the way. It kept going lower and lower, and we lost a lot of money. So here's what my mentors taught me. They said, Steve, before you trade anything, it doesn't matter if you're going to be trading this technique or any strategy, anything, you must always add one tool, and that is the 50-period simple moving average. Now, it does not matter if I was looking at a five-minute chart, a tick chart, a weekly chart or a daily chart, as we have here in this example. But you need to have a 50-period, not a 50-day, but a 50-period moving average. That just means that whatever time period you're looking at, we want to make a 50-period average based off of that time frame. Okay? And then once you have that plotted, you ask yourself, where is price in relation to that? Because if price is above, then the only thing you'll do is look for buy setups. If price is below, as it is here in this example, then all we're going to be doing is looking for sell setups. So right off the bat, half the battle is done. We know what side of the market to be on. Right? We don't have to try and pick bottoms. We don't have to try and pick tops. We know by looking at where price is in relation to the 50. All right, so before I was trying to go long the uh, Caterpillar tractor all the way down. Now I know that I'm only going to be looking to go short. So how do we apply this technique? Well, we're going to still going to use any type of overbought, oversold tool, any type of oscillator, any type of momentum tool, anything. It doesn't matter as long as it says when something is overbought or oversold. Okay? And we're going to, since we're going short, what we want to do is locate all of the so-called oversold areas, as you see here. Every time we went below this threshold, that was a so-called oversold area. Okay? So this is what we want to do. We want to, once we get into this area, we want to identify it. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to identify all the bottoms that were created when we were in the so-called oversold area. So here's the oversold area. There was a bottom created right here. Here's the next oversold. There was a bottom here, and there was here, and so on. Now, there's bottoms other places, such as the short-term bottom right here, another short-term bottom right here. But if we scroll down, we were not in the oversold condition. So we're not concerned with them. We're only concerned with exploiting the so-called oversold area because why? Because we know there's no such thing as oversold. All right, so we're going to exploit it. So here's how the technique works. Once you trade one to two ticks below that so-called oversold low, that's your entry. And you see how simple it is now to be in sync with the market you're trading and to make money, have consistent gains. Where before, we were trying to pick a bottom and continue to buy and buy all the way down. Now all we're doing is selling in sync with the trend. Let's go to the E-mini example. All right? Let's look at the E-mini example before. This is a five-minute chart now. Entirely different market, but the same uh, slow stochastic. Okay? So now, first thing we do is what? We plot a 50-period moving average. And we ask ourselves, where is price in relation to that 50-period moving average? Price is above. So this means we are in no way going to be shorting the E-mini in this five-minute time frame. We're not even going to consider trying to go short. We're only going to be looking for long setups because we want to be consistent with this technique. And it's, this is how you're consistent by being in sync with the trend. All right, so since we're going to be looking to go long, we want to exploit the so-called overbought conditions. As you see here, every time we went above that overbought threshold, here is where the overbought scenario is. All right, so now what's our next step? Well, we just want to reverse the step. We want to locate and identify all the short-term tops that were created while the market was so-called overbought. Okay, you see all these tops here? They were all created while we were in the overbought area. Why are we concerned with that? Because we know there's no such thing as overbought, and we're going to exploit it. We want to make sure that we 
uh, take out all the overbought scenarios and go long when we trade one tick above. See how simple this is? Now, before we had tried to short the E-mini all the way up and we lost a lot of money. Now we have nothing but winning trades. Okay? And then lastly, the Forex markets. Before we were trying to go short the Swiss franc and we literally got, you know, killed. We lost a lot of money because we kept shorting it the entire way up. This is the way I used to trade. I, every once in a while, a stock would go straight up and I'd continue to short it and short it and ultimately I'd get the call from uh, my bosses in New York saying, what are you doing? I mean, just you should think how much money you would have made if you were long. But it was going against everything I had been taught. So, first thing we do is apply the 50 period moving average. And we ask ourselves, where is price in relation to the 50? Price is above. So this means we're only looking to go along the Swiss franc. If we're looking to go along the Swiss franc, we look for overbought conditions because we're going to exploit them. We don't believe in anything being overbought or oversold. Remember, there's no such thing as overbought or oversold. So we locate where the so-called overbought areas are and then we simply identify all of the short-term tops, the little tops that were created in the so-called overbought conditions. Once we trade one to three pips above, that's our clue to get in. Now before, as I stated, you were probably hiding the account statements from uh, your uh, significant other because you blew your account out. Now you're happy to show them how much money you've made because you're in sync with the market. You've got nothing but winning trades. Instead of the prior scenario, we had nothing but losing trades. Okay, so that in a nutshell is the entry technique. All right, we showed you some older charts just for educational purposes to show you exactly how it works. Remember, the one thing I want to make sure that you understand is this works in any market, in any time frame. As you see here, these are daily charts. We showed you a five-minute chart of the E-mini. I'm going to show you a lot of different markets, a lot of different time frames. But please do not get hung up on the oscillator. This is just your standard slow stochastic. I just went to the uh, uh, indicator uh, toolbox. I opened it up and I picked slow stochastic and that's all I did. I didn't edit anything. I didn't alter. I didn't look at the settings. I don't even know what they are. All I know is that that top line, that top blue line, I believe is 80 and the bottom one is 20. But please, don't get hung up on this indicator. It could be any type of stochastic, any type of momentum tool, any oscillator, anything that tells you something is overbought or oversold. It could even be somebody on TV telling you a specific market is overbought. Okay, good. We're going to exploit that because we know there's no such thing as overbought or oversold regardless of where it comes from. So don't get hung up on that indicator, and let's start showing you some examples, some recent examples, and we'll start off with these examples with stocks for all you stock traders out there. All right, here's letter G coming into March. Okay, as we can see here, we are, where are we in uh, relation to the 50 period moving average? Price is above. So there's no way, looking at this chart, we ever wanted to pick a top in letter G. There's no way. We're not concerned with it. We're, we're just only going to be looking for long setups. So if we're looking to go long, we're using this technique. We locate all the so-called overbought conditions. Then we identify the short-term tops here, where the green uh, horizontal line is. And once we trade above, that's our signal to get in. See how simple this is? This is just going back uh, since uh, January, how you could have uh, you know, had a nice profit just trading this. How about ROST? Okay, this is going into uh, the latter part of March. Price, once again, is above the 50 period moving average. So it's telling us that we're not going to short anything. We're only looking to go long. See, right off the bat, we already know what side of the market to be on. All right, we already know that it, uh, it, it, we're not going to short anything. We already know we're just going to be looking to go long ROST. That's it. It's that simple. You see, trading is really simple. It's just ourselves that overcomplicate it. So this is a daily bar chart. We're above the 50. We're only looking for long setups with this technique. Next thing we do is locate all the so-called overbought areas. We have right here. We were overbought starting right here all the way up until the latter part of March. And then we simply identify all the tops. That's where the market made a high and then a lower high. Then the next thing you do is you just identify. And once we trade one to two ticks above, that's your buy setup. Okay. How about RIG? Okay, RIG. This is an older chart starting from last August, but it's a great example of how you know it's how simple it is uh, to trade when you're in sync with the market. As you see here, we ask ourselves the first question: Where is price in relation to the 50-period moving average? 
prices below going back like three or four months. So all that time, the only way you really would have lost money is by trying to pick a bottom and rig. Our traders and our students know that no one would be even considering going long this stock. The only thing you would be thinking of is looking for sell setups. That's it. That's how simple it is. All right? Now, if we're using this technique and we're going short, then the first thing we do is identify the so-called oversold areas all right, down here. Then once we do that, then we identify where the so-called bottoms were. We see we made these little short-term bottoms and bounce, a bounce in there. And these were all made while we were in the so-called oversold conditions. Once we trade one to uh, three ticks below, that's our entry point. And you think you could have made some money shorting this stock. Now, I realize that not everyone trades stocks or has uh, accounts to, to go short. Uh, so you could buy puts. You could simply transfer this technique by uh, buying uh, the puts, going along the put call, uh, put options. How about QCOM, OK? And now here is a, a difficult chart. It's more advanced because we're oscillating below, above, below, above. So a lot of traders get confused. And this is why we say we're an educational company, because we want you to walk through this process and paper trade for a while so that you understand the concept. So it's difficult to figure out what side to be on here. But what's the first thing we do? We look at the overbought, oversold tool. And we were oversold right here, OK? so. That gives us a clue that, all right, well, we were oversold. And there was a short-term low that was created while we were oversold. So this is a, a shorting opportunity to go short right there. So you could have gone short once we traded one tick below. And as you can see, nothing much happened for the next three or four days here. In fact, we actually started to go higher. Okay. Once again, we're not going to talk about stop placement, but it's obvious to see that you could place your stop right here if you wanted to, it's, or even up here if you wanted to. It's up to you. Or the first close above the 50. There's a lot of different ways uh, just to use common sense with this. But the most important thing is knowing what side of the market to be on and knowing when to get in. So let's say you're short QCOM. And look what happens. Obviously, some news came out. We gapped down probably earnings or something happened uh, with the uh, jobless claims or whatever, well, we don't really follow any news at specialist trading because it only gets in the way. Everything we need to know is right in front of us, really. In fact, the market was below the 50 most of the time, starting from right here. So it was telling us that we're most likely going lower. All right? Had we been above the 50, well, most likely we would have gone higher. But we didn't. The market was already telling us in advance. So the news came out. It's nothing that we were privy to. No one called us up and said, hey, the stock's going to open down gap down strongly, so tell your students to go short. We didn't know anything. All we did was get our information from the price in front of us. How about Grub? OK, this is going into uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, price at this point crossed above the 50 period moving average. So we're only looking to go long. OK, that's all. So we take advantage of the so-called overbought conditions once we identify the so-called tops, we just buy when we trade one tick above. Once again, it can't get any simpler than that. This is just a great entry technique that you can apply to any strategy you currently trade, or you can uh, devise a strategy based off of this. How about MOS? Above the 50 period simple moving average. So it's, it's you know, very simple trying to figure out what side of the market to be on. You'll never, none of our students at Specialist Trading ever ask, Boy, I wonder what I should be doing. Should I be buying or should I be selling? No one ever does that. Everyone knows right off the bat what they should be looking for. All right? So we already know that we should be only looking to go long because price is above the 50. Since we're above the 50, then we want to exploit the so-called overbought conditions right here. And then we just simply identify all the tops. Look at all the tops that were created. And look at all the chances to go long just by simply buying when we trade one or three ticks above. Another one, GB, going here right up into April, just this past week. We're well above the 50 period moving average. So we want to exploit so-called overbought conditions. Once we identify them, then we simply identify the tops. And that's our signal to jump on board. Okay? We're not concerned with any news. We're not concerned with what's going on in the world. We're only concerned with one thing. That's the chart in front of us. That's all we're concerned with. Okay? There's no reason to overcomplicate trading. Because it's been my experience in 38 years that uh, the reason why people are, are able to trade 20, 30, 40 years down the road is because they finally come to the realization that the simpler things are, the more you'll get onto that road to consistency. 
So it doesn't get much simpler than this. So this is where we say where keep things as simple as possible. Uh, try to you know cloud out all the unnecessary information such as news, such as uh, earnings reports, such as uh, you know uh, people telling you what they think is going to happen on TV or whatever. You know that just serves to complicate things and to make you have self doubt about your trading method. I see we have some questions coming up. Remember, we'll take. I, I stated in the beginning some people may have coming in late. I'll take questions at the very end, okay? All right, letter X, steel. First thing we ask ourselves, where is price in relation to the 50-period moving average? It's easy to see price is below. So do you think you would have liked to, to know that? Let's say you had, uh, someone in some trading room had told you to go long steel. Well, you would have thought, boy, that was a terrible trade. How could I have gone long now that I have the 50-period moving average here? So that's how simple this technique is, but how powerful it is. Apply this to any market, any time frame. I don't care if you trade tick charts. I don't care if you trade weekly bars or monthly bars. But always have a 50-period moving average plotted and ask yourself, where is price in relation to that? If the majority of price is below, well then, only look for sell setups, such as we have here. So we're going to exploit the so-called oversold areas. We locate them, and then we simply identify where the bottoms were and then use those to go short. See, the only way you would have lost money trading steel in this time period right here, in this four months coming into uh, February, uh, was by trying to pick a bottom. But none of our students would have ever even tried to have gone long uh, letter X. They would have simply looked for shorting opportunities with all the different techniques we, we uh, teach them. How about uh, double A? As we see here, we were above the uh, 50 period, but then roughly uh, last month or, or a month or two ago, we crossed below it. Now, we kind of oscillated above and below. This is where students get confused. They say, well, Steve, the moving average, price is right on the moving average. The general rule of thumb is you want to see about two or three closes in one direction. So right here, we have maybe two closes above. Simply because price closes above, it does not say, OK, buy at the market. Okay, so this is where students get confused. They, they say, well, Steve, price is right on the 50 or right above it, so do I buy? No. It just tells us that because price is above now, start to look for some type of structure, some strategy. It could be one of Steve's, could be one of my, something else. But now you're going to start to look for buy setups only. That's it. That's how simple it is. It doesn't have to be one of my strategies. It could be something you've put together. It could be one of Stephen Bigelow's. It could be something from someone else's. But you'll have a higher level of consistency if you only enter to go long if uh, you see a, con uh, a consecutive price is closing above. Okay? Same way below, all of a sudden we crossed below. Okay? So now the bias is to the downside. So we're going to exploit the so-called oversold conditions, identify all the bottoms that we created in the so-called oversold conditions, and then simply go short once we trade one or two ticks below. Very simple. Now, once again, some would say, well, Steve, we crossed above here. OK, well, if you wanted to use this technique, remember, if we're above the 50, then we have to wait for it to be in the so-called overbought conditions to go long. So if we look down, were we in overbought conditions? No, we weren't even close. So there's no reason to get nervous or get all hyper and wonder what to do. You're not even close to being in those areas, so we can only trade this technique if we're exploiting overbought or oversold conditions. And you can apply this to commodities. Here's an older chart of heating oil. Once again, a lot of people lost a lot of money trying to pick a bottom in oil. None of our students lost money trading oil. Why? Because they applied the 50-period moving average. And looking back at this chart all the way back to uh, October, November, December, we were well below the 50-period moving average. So we know that we weren't going to go long until price crossed above it. Now, if we look at this chart here, we were well below the 50, so we're looking to go short. So that means we exploit the so-called oversold area. Now, all we have to do is identify the bottoms, and then we just went short heating oil. See how simple that was? You could have been making a ton of money just trading heating oil with a simple entry uh, technique. Now, obviously, heating oil and uh, crude oil stopped uh, roughly in January and February, they did bottom out, and they started to go higher. That's okay. We just switch and reverse. You would have been stopped out probably on the last trade with a loss, but once we went above the 50-period simple moving average, well, guess what? 
Now we are in the so-called overbought scenario. Remember, there's no such thing as oversold or overbought. So we're going to exploit that. We identify where the overbought is. We identify all the tops. And now we just switch. Now we could have made money to the long side when heating oil had its nice bounce up. All right, let's look at the E-mini S&P. Let's look at a different market, different time frames. We just showed you stocks. We just showed you how it worked in some commodities. Let's look at the futures. All right, here's a daily chart of the E-mini going back to February into March. All right, price was initially below, but while we were below, did we get in the so-called oversold? No, we never did, so there's no setup here. But once we crossed above the 50 period, two or three consecutive closes above, guess what? We went into the so-called over bought scenario. So we want to exploit that. So we locate the overbought area, we identify all the tops, and could have gone along these nice three trades right here. And usually what we tell our students is if you're going to use this technique, usually the first one has the largest gain. So many of our students only take the first setup and forget about the next one. But it's up to you. Remember, we just want to give you the information. We don't teach or trade systems at specialist trading. We teach uh, sound fundamental education and help you put it together to mold to fit your needs. So we don't have statistics, we don't have win-loss ratios, we don't have uh, percentage gains, we don't have any of those numbers because everyone can trade our methods differently. Two people can get the same setup and come up with entirely different results. Someone can be in the trade for one day, another person can stay in the trade for two weeks. It's up to them because we just give you the information on how to trade. Let's go to a smaller time frame. Let's go to a 60-minute chart. Okay, This is going back to uh, the beginning of March. And as we see here, in the beginning, we were below the 50 period. So what does that mean? That means we want to exploit so-called oversold areas. So we took advantage of these so-called oversold conditions, identified the lows, and simply went short. Now, if you had taken this first one, we had a nice profit, 20 or so points to the downside. Now. Once we started to cross above, well, then we switch gears, and now we're only looking to go long. So we identify the overbought area, we identify the tops, and more profits to the upside this time. And let me show you something that happened today. In fact, I traded this this morning in the first hour of the day. In fact, I think it was less than that. I think it was the first half hour. Here's a thousand tick bar chart of the E-mini from today. As you can see down here, this is coming into 4.2. Here's the 50 period moving average, as you see here. Simple moving average. Here's the 1,000 bar tick bar charts of the opening of today. And we went below in the so-called oversold area, but we never went below it. And then price crossed up above the 50. So we're looking to exploit overbought conditions because we never really got below in the oversold. Even though we made some bottoms, we never violated them. But we did violate some tops. As you can see here, we had a couple of tops created. And had you just taken that very first buy setup, you could have made a nice five or six points in the very first half hour to 45 minutes of the day. Okay? That's roughly between two and $300 in the first half hour of the day per contract. You trade 10 contracts, that's between two and $3,000. It's up to you. But uh, as we stated, some of our students will take the first one, and that's it. Others will compound and continue to buy more and track and, tr and you know, just trail their stop the entire way up. There's a number of different ways to trade these techniques. But this was this morning. You see, I know a lot of traders and educators like to show you and cherry pick examples that were uh, you know, maybe years ago, that worked five years ago. But we like to teach our students and show them things working uh, all the time, whether it happened last month or whether it happened in the last couple of hours. Let's move on to the Forex markets. I want to share with you one technique that uh, we have a currency pair trader that likes to use uh, applying this entry method. Uh, this is an older chart of the British pound. It's a weekly chart. As you can see, we were originally crossing above the 50 period moving average. So what was that telling us? It was telling us that we're looking to go long and that we were going to exploit the overbought conditions. And so on a weekly basis, you would have had some very nice trades to the upside. But as we stated, the first trade is usually the best one. As you start to get higher and higher, you run out of steam, and ultimately we crossed back, and now we're below the 50-period simple moving average. Okay, So that's OK. You just switch gears, exploit the over uh, sold conditions now, and go short. Now, this is just an ideal scenario using a weekly chart. But we realize that a lot of people 
you know, do not trade the currency pairs on a weekly basis. There's a lot of risk. You need a large capital size in order to trade that. So what they'll do is use this larger time frame, seeing that the weekly charts were below the 50-period moving average coming into August, September. So they'll go to the next smaller time frame. So once we go into August and September, we see we're below the 50. Well, we just apply the same technique, but now we're in sync with the higher time frame. Okay. Uh, I don't personally use this technique or teach it, but a lot of our students do, so that's perfectly fine. You're not in any way altering or editing the technique. But let's just say daily bars are still a little bit too rich for your blood. So as long as you are below on the daily bars, you're below the 50-period moving average, well, you can go to a smaller time frame, such as four-hour bars, which a lot of current spirit traders like to trade four-hour bars. All right. So once on a four-hour time frame you went below the 50, as we are right here, well, then you know you're in sync with the higher time frame and you just start applying the same technique. You see how simple it is. Okay, so now you have the rules. You know exactly what it's based off of. It's just an entry technique, but it's very simple. Once again, if you've been trading for more than a couple of weeks, I'm sure you can figure out where you'd want to place a stop and where you want to get out. Uh, as I stated, most of our students, when they're applying this to entry technique, they just take the first entry because that usually, when it works well, it has the highest gains. But there are two very important points to remember uh, before we go into any questions and answers. I really want you to understand, and I really want to stress this. The first thing is, is what my mentors taught me. And you must, if you're really that road to consistency, grasp this concept, that there is no such thing as overbought, oversold. I just showed you charts in all markets in all time frames where they continue to go and be in overbought conditions for weeks, months, years. I also showed you markets, different time frames, different uh, directions where markets were oversold for months, if not years. Okay? So if you're trying to buck the trend, it's going to be a very expensive lesson trying to learn that because trust me, when I first started trading, that's the way I used to trade. I tried to pick tops and bottoms based on overbought, oversold conditions and it would work fantastically until it didn't work anymore. So the whole key to being a successful trader is being able to sustain yourself, being able to trade not just a few years, but 20, 30, 40 years down the road. These are the ones you want to listen to. Stephen Bigelow has been trading for a number of years. I've been trading for 38 years. There are lots of traders who have only been trading for 5 or 10 years, which really is not enough to follow and have much merit because we don't really know if they're going to stand the test of time. I knew tons of traders on the floor that, tra that traded and made hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars in a relatively short time and not one of them is still trading. They've all been blown out. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, the secret to success is longevity. It's about sustaining yourself. It's not about making tons of money because you can just as easily give it all back. And trust me, I know because once again, this is the way I used to trade. So obviously, the second point is never ever try to pick tops and bottoms. It, it really, uh, it, some people can do it, and I'm not saying that not everyone can do it. It's just that these people are are, are in the top, you know, two or three percent of all traders. They're really skilled expert traders. But for the majority of us who can't do it, myself included, uh, you know, it's much easier to be in sync with the markets. So in closing here, I want you to ask yourself and ask yourself honestly. Do you think any of these edges that I presented today could have helped your trading this past year? Let's just say that you know you learned this entry technique and you say, Steve, this is really not my cup of tea. I don't really trade this way, and uh, thanks for the info, but uh, I don't think I can use it. Okay, I understand that, but what about the 50-period moving average? Do you think that could have helped your trading? In fact, I can almost guarantee, if you go back and look at your last 10 or 20 trades, I can almost guarantee that it would have helped your trading tremendously because most likely most of your losers were because you were buying below the 50 period moving average and selling above the 50 period moving average. So go back and look at your trades at a 50 period moving average and look back and see where you entered. Were you in sync with this simple technique I, I shared with you? I use this on virtually every time I trade and every trading strategy I use. In fact, I've often told my students if I were stranded on a desert aisle and I could only use one technique, it would be the 50 period moving average because that alone has, has helped me become consistent more than anything else because I'm on the right side. Okay? But what about uh, you know, uh, the overbought, oversold uh, you know, technique? I'm sure that could have helped you as well. Now, 
So ask yourself, could that have helped you? If I'm sure you're going to say, yes, it could have at least helped your trading a little bit. What if I could give you three or four, maybe even five more uh, techniques just as powerful but entirely different from the ones I just shared with you today? I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about our offer today. That's our Secrets of a Stock Exchange Specialist training session. Now, what it is, it's a three-hour video seminar. I was asked to speak a couple of years ago uh, at a, a, a trading conference in Denver, Colorado, and they videotaped the entire time I spoke, the three hours. In that uh, three-hour conference, I spoke about many more high-probability trading edges. Okay, I also uh, talked about which indicators to use, which ones not to use. I went into the difference between a system versus a strategy. I shared with all the people in attendance the number one chart pattern you should be looking for in all strategy setups. And I think the most important part and the most valuable part of this presentation I gave was I gave the entire rules to one of our best pullback strategies. That's strategy number one. Okay? And that comes in this three-hour video course. Let me show you some uh, recent uh, buy setups and sell setups in using strategy number one our course members have taken. Now the technique I just shared with you, the overbought over sold condition, is, is called a continuation technique because we're continuing in uh, the direction of the trend. Uh, strategy number one is a pullback technique where it looks like we're picking tops and bottoms, but actually what we're doing is we're buying on pullbacks that are in sync with the overall trend. So as you see here, it looks like we're going lower and picking an exact bottom here in these two instances, but we were totally in sync with the uptrend and the strategy tells you exactly where to enter. It tells you where the pullback should conclude. Now this worked in urban. It also worked in NRG. As you can see, the strategy determined that we were in a downtrend. So every time we had a little bounce, well, it generated a sell signal. Every time we bounced up, another sell signal, and so on. Okay? Now this can also work on the E-mini charts. Here's a weekly chart of the E-mini. Every time the market started to sell off, a lot of people were thinking, well, we've topped out. We're rolling over. Strategy number one, generated buy signals. Even going back to last October when we had a large sell-off in the market, strategy number one generated a buy signal here. Now that was on a weekly basis. You can also use this on a smaller time frame. Here's a five-minute time frame uh, going uh, last month or so in the E-mini. Okay? Every time you had a sell-off, you had a nice buy here on these little lows. As soon as the market changed direction, well, the strategy generated sell signals on these highs. And then lastly, we can apply this to currency pairs for all you currency traders. Here's a Canadian dollar, obviously in an uptrend, but every time we had a little sell-off, strategy number one generated a buy signal. Okay. Now in this three-hour video seminar, we teach you all the rules, where to enter, where to place your stop, where to exit. We teach you money management rules. This all comes in the course. As well, you get uh, complete rules uh, to this, uh, as well as you get uh, my personal email address. You can contact me whenever you'd like, because now you're a full-fledged member of Specialist Trading. Okay? So this is a three-hour video course with tons of information, lots of valuable information that I shared at a conference. This is usually sold on our sister site, which is Pro Trader Strategies, for close to $1,000. But because of our affiliation with Steve Bigelow, we are dropping the price down to 37 Okay, we've done this once before, and a lot of people have uh, contacted us and said how much they're grateful for sharing all this information in an online video course. So if you really want to take advantage of a lot more great information at a very inexpensive price, I strongly suggest taking advantage of this $37 deal. What it is is an online course, so it's not something that you get shipped to you. It's not something that's going to disintegrate after two weeks. It's yours for life. You simply get the link shipped out to you. It goes to a certain page, and you can watch it whenever you want. You can watch it at work. You can watch it on your iPad, at home, at whenever you'd like. But you get all this great information as well as the complete rules to our probably our most consistent pullback strategy. That's uh, strategy number one. Okay. So here's how to take advantage of that great $37 deal. As I stated, Pro Trader Strategies is our sister site, so you can contact all of the uh, trading consultants. They, they monitor and market all of our uh, courses and all of our strategies. So you can email them at trading at Pro Trader Strategies. Probably the best thing would be to do uh, would be two things here, actually. Uh, you can call them directly at area code 310-598-6677, or you can just go directly to this link. Now, this isn't a live link, so you'd have to cut and paste this onto your browser, but I believe Becky had just uh, 
posted it on the uh, chat box, so you can, that's a live link, you can just simply click that on and it will take you there, okay, and you'll, you can take full advantage of that. And so if you have any trouble uh, going to that link or if you're not sure what you're paying for, if you're not sure if it went through, all you have to do is simply uh, contact the people at ProTrader Strategies and don't worry, they won't, if you feel you uh, uh, did it and got charged twice, don't worry, they will take care of you, but uh, in the time we've been doing this, no one has ever been charged twice, but some people are always frightened thinking they hit the, the enter button twice, so don't worry, they will take care of you, and trust me, $37, I think most of you probably spent more than that today uh, just trading on your commission costs, I know I did, and also, uh, you cannot go out to dinner for less than uh, $50 these days, and I don't even know if that's that, that uh, you can do it that for that little bit of a price. So $37 is a great deal. Three hours of information that has taken me roughly about 38 years to accumulate. Okay. All right. So with that said, we still have a few minutes here for questions, and I want to thank you for holding off. Uh, and uh, I will leave this information right up here, and I want to thank you, Becky, for posting that link. Here, once again, is the link, but you have to copy it and paste it onto your browser, but I believe they've also posted it. Um, Robert asks, what indicator do you follow to indicate when the trend goes from oversold to overbought vis-a-vis -vis when you're looking at the current day chart? Well, like I said, I just plotted your standard stochastic, okay? And, and that's, all I did. that's all I did. I didn't edit anything. I didn't open up the edit box and change things or look at the parameters. That's all you do. But it, as I stated at the beginning of this, I said most people are probably going to, you know, want to make a big deal about what, which indicator sh should I use. Don't get hung up on that. It doesn't matter. All we're trying to do is exploit overbought and oversold conditions because we've now come to the mindset, we've grasped that there is no such thing as overbought or oversold, so we're going to exploit that. So it doesn't matter what tool you use, just as long as it's telling you the markets are overbought or oversold. Okay? So it can be a stochastic, RSI, momentum, MACD, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just use your standard slow stochastic, okay? Uh, Ivan is asking, what is a good source for the charts that contain the necessary data? Well, uh, you know, we're not affiliated in terms of, you know, promoting any, any uh, uh, charting platforms. Uh, there are a number of, of uh, charting platforms such as TradeStation, uh, NinjaTrader, uh, Metastock, MT4, they all have, I think, or Swim, they all have their different uh, prices and, and different... Uh, things, but I would speak to some of those people. Uh, uh, those are probably the, the main sources, okay? Uh, how many tops are necessary to get into the trade? Good question. Only one. Remember, all you need is just one, and then once you're in, that's it. Uh, and all you want to do is, if you're exploiting over bot condition, you just want to see it trade one to three ticks above there. Now, people will say, well, well, how many ticks? One or three, what is it? Well, it's up to you, because this is why we say we want you to make your decisions. Some traders say, the minute it trades one tick, I'm in. Other traders say, no, 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 I want to see it trade 25 cents above, just to make sure it goes higher. So it doesn't, you know, it's up to you. We're not teaching a system here. A system means you have to trade it the same way every time. What we're teaching you is a technique that has some real nice consistency to it, and then we're letting you run with it, okay? Uh, let me see here. Um, I'm going to backtrack. Let's see. Everyone can see this all, okay. Will this work with range bars? Yes, it will. It'll work with range bars. Uh, usually, I, I personally like to use it with tick charts because it gives a lot more setups. But, yeah, the, the main thing I want to stress is paper trade this technique, okay? For $37, I don't want you just to jump in and start trading it on Monday because, I, you know, most traders will ultimately lose because you don't understand the rules yet. So paper trade it for a while to see how well it works. Trade it with the range bars, trade it with the regular uh, standard open, high, low, close bars, candlesticks, whatever you want, but just in any uh, overbought, oversold tool, but just so that you understand the process fully, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, does the top-bottom technique see success in day trading using with the eight uh, uh, as, uh, exponential moving average and with one five fifteen minute charts? Do you add 50 period simple moving average in your settings and monitor? Well, I can tell you right now is I, I know about Steve's uh, eight uh, period uh, um, exponential moving average. It's a very great tool, but it's not. We don't use it in this, and uh, that's something with Steve's techniques. But it's a very good tool. It runs along the same concept. But 
when we're looking at this, we're just basically applying this to see what side of the market to be on. That's why we use the 50 period because it encompasses a large range of different time frames. Okay? So if price is above, it just means we're looking to go long. If price is below, it means we're looking to go short. It doesn't mean we buy at the market to go long or buy or sell at the market to go short. And then once we know what side to be on, then we add structure. Now this could be Steve's structure, it could be mine, it could be by structure I mean some type of a trading method. It doesn't matter just as long as it has some type of consistency to it. Uh, if you're asking what are the best time frames, well, it all depends on what you're looking for. You know, the best time frame is the one that makes you feel comfortable. Okay? We have traders that swear that only use uh, uh, tick charts, a certain time tick charts. We have other traders that only use weekly bars, and they both swear that they're the best for trading on method. There is no best. It's just what makes them feel comfortable, where they feel comfortable trading, because everyone comes in with different parameters. Okay? Um, MP says, I'm using now the 50 and already, and it, it's great. Uh, great. I'm glad. You know, as I said, if I was stranded on an island and I could only use one tool to trade, that would be it. That would be, because it has kept me out of so much trouble, and it's also helped me become consistent in my trading. So we give that to you for free, and uh, it's very simple. You can plot that with any time frame, any technique. I showed you on currency pairs. I showed you on stock charts. I showed you on the futures markets. That's how, that's how versatile that is. Uh, Lorenzo asks, uh, do you trade with the overall market such as the S&P 500? Uh, I don't know what you mean by with the overall market. If you're talking about if I look at the overall market to determine what I do on, on a smaller time frame, no, I don't. Uh, I think I may have brought that up before. It's been my opinion and just my experience that uh, there's no consistency in that for me. Uh, it's only actually served to keep me out of a lot of trades. So uh, I don't uh, suggest that to my members that they have to do that, but a lot of our members like to. I mean, they swear by it. Once again, this is having you become a part of the process. If this is what makes you feel comfortable trading, then great. That's what will make you successful. So as long as you're not altering the rules, it's okay to look at a higher time frame. I just personally don't apply it. Okay. Uh, let me see, go down the road here a little bit. Range bars, yes it does. Let's see. Does the top bottom technique uh, have success in day trading? Oh, I think I already asked that one. Uh, Eric asks, hello there, 50 period simple moving average is on open or close or high or low or weighted, thanks. Uh, it's just basically off of the close. It's as simple as possible. Don't overcomplicate it by using the weighted or based off the high or the low. Most 50 period simple moving average don't even ask you that. They don't give you the option. They just automatically plot. And the only thing they ask you is what length do you want. And so uh, we just want your standard simple moving average, which is based off of the close, that's all, and just a 50 period. Okay? Uh, Ron asks, does the slope of the 50 period moving average matter? That's a good question, Ron. Uh, well, you know, uh, many times it does. It's not a uh, prerequisite, but yes, because the slope will tell you that there's more volatility, there's more strength in the uptrend. But oftentimes, if you're only going to take that very first setup, which is when uh, you know the first time it crosses above the first short-term high, well, many times the uh, moving average hasn't hasn't had a chance to slope higher yet. So if you're waiting on that, you might miss a few good trades. So it's up to you. Once again, this is all part of the practicing and paper trading process so that you can be, become a part of the process yourself and make your own decisions. It's up to you how you want to trade this. But uh, the 50 period, uh, sure, if it's upward sloping, it's just basically telling you there's a lot of strength in that trend. Uh, uh, let's see, Nelly is asking, will I set aside Mr. Bigelow's T-line in entering and exiting the trade? You, you know, once again, you can add those, and I'm sure they'll only uh, heighten your levels of uh, consistency. So it's okay. They're not going to alter it. You know, but go ahead. And, you now have the rules of what I've given you for this entry technique. You know Steve's rules. Go ahead and experiment with them. This is what we encourage. See, we, we want to get away from the uh, scenario that so many traders get into where it's basically, tell me what to do. Tell me, what I, tell me where I buy. Tell me where I sell. That's not our philosophy. We feel that that's a road to failure. That's why 80% of most traders fail, because you're taking yourself out of the game. 
I want to work with you and say, okay, listen, we can use this option, we can use this. Let's practice with both for a while. Let's see what works best for you, okay? And let's see what one makes you feel comfortable. Is one better than the other? No. The only thing that's better than the other is the technique that makes you feel comfortable trading it. So it's just like saying, what's the best time frame? The best one is the one that makes you feel comfortable. There is no such thing as best time frame, okay? Uh, George is asking, or Jorge is asking, how long does this sale last? Uh, I believe just for a couple of days. Then it goes back to the $997. So, you know, I'm sure most of you can afford 37 you know, because we, we have a great uh, relationship with Stephen Bigelow and uh, Candlestick Trading Forum. So we don't want to take advantage of anyone or give you a presentation and then ask you to come up with $1,000. We don't feel it would be right. So we want to offer you this discount in good faith, showing you that we really want to teach you some valuable tips and techniques and hopefully can expand you for trading and then hopefully have you purchase some of our other techniques that, that still aren't uh, as expensive as that. But uh, So $37 will uh, offer will last for uh, just a couple of days, I believe. And, but please remember, once you become a member and, and purchase the $37 deal, it's not going to expire in two weeks. It does not disintegrate. Uh, this uh, makes you a member for life. Uh, so you can always contact me as long as you like, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, it's yours for life. You can study this and use it as a refresher course a year or two down the road just to look at the technique again or some of the things I teach you in the three-hour video. Okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, it seems like uh, when ever every you see the buy or sell signal, the stock moves the opposite direction for a couple of days. So this means you have to hold it longer. Well, once again, this comes through your process. I just showed you those examples, but I'm sure there's tons of other examples. So work with it. See, it, this is the, what we want to do. We want to educate you a great technique for entering. Then it's part of the process of you unfolding it and seeing how to work with it. Some of our traders say, well, you know what I do, Steve? I wait for it to trigger. But then I place a limit order a little bit lower because many times I'll see that the price will fade back a little bit and I can get a better price. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Other traders say, well, yeah, but I don't want to miss a good trade because sometimes I've tried to do that and then I miss a great trade where it just goes straight up. Okay, well, then don't do it. There's no right or wrong way. Remember, we want you to become a part of the process. I said in the very first opening statement, we are an educational company. We're not about force feeding you signals so that you blindly take them without knowing why. We want you to become a part of the process so that you really know why you're entering based off of what you want. Okay? I just have time for just a few more questions. I don't want to take, we're just about timed over. Uh, uh, Hardy's asking, do we have course for trading options on weekly charts? Well, actually we have a great strategy. I won't want to get too much in detail with it. It's strategy number four, which we have a number of option traders who trade strategy number four on weekly charts. And basically, once a signal is generated, all they do is they go long calls or long, go long puts. But it's not a, a strategy base such as a, uh, uh, an option strategy, such as a spread or something of that nature, a butter, butterfly spread. It's simply uh, a strategy telling you when to enter, where your stop should be, where your exit should be. And instead of purchasing the stock, we have many option traders that apply it to weekly charts and purchase the long call or long put option. Okay. All right, I think our time is up, and I, here's the information once again. Uh, thanks uh, to Becky for posting it again. As you see there, it's been posted on the chat box, and you can just click that on live. Very inexpensive. We discounted it. All this great information from almost $1,000 all the way down to uh, $37. It's three hours of me teaching you. I, I just shared with you, I believe, in the last slide. Let me just post that up again once more. This is what's included in the three hours. Many more edges. If you like the edge I shared with you today, I have about three or four, maybe even I believe five more edges just like that in the course. We also give you a full-fledged uh, strategy with all the entry rules that cost hundreds of dollars that we're including in this as well for only 37 So it's a great deal. Uh, I really uh, think that uh, most of you can afford $37, and if you can't, then you should not be trading because if, uh, you know, you're going to need more than that through some of the ups and downs of trading. So here's the information. Uh, contact Pro Trader Strategies. There's their phone number and strategy. Uh, someone's asking, is number four uh, in the course? No, number four is not in the course. Number one is in the course. Okay, That's a pullback strategy. But uh, 
Once again, I want to say thank you to all the good people at Candlestick Forum. Thanks to Steve Bigelow. Thanks to Jim Cooper helping me set up, and especially to Becky for helping me set up today. And I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your uh, Thursday evening to come and hear me speak. We have a great relationship with Mr. Bigelow, and we hope to do more uh, webinars for you in the future. Thank you so much. I look forward to all of you having a great uh, holiday and to all of you ultimately becoming members of mine at Specialist Trading. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.